mic is it doesn't uh, pick up very well so I'll try to speak loud um, good afternoon everybody and uh, thank you for for coming and on behalf of General Paxton allow me to welcome all of you as we show appreciation this afternoon to the members of our military past and, and, and present it is a privilege and an honor to be with you today that we can give appropriate recognition and in fact honor to the men and women of our agency that served our nation in the armed forces. I don't know if you know or not, but the Office of Attorney General currently employs 295 veterans representing each branch of our armed forces, including the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard, the Army National Guard, and the Texas National Guard. We also have, we employ surviving spouses of, of, of veterans and orphans of veterans. In addition to celebrating a veterans today, Veterans Day, today is the 242nd birthday of the U.S. Marine Corps. And everyone said, Oorah! Mike, that was for you. <laughs> I hope you've gotten a chance to look at the pictures. You've gotten to see the slide presentation. You know, some of the, when you look at some of our colleagues, some of them haven't really changed very much. Others, well, <laughs> I'll let you all be the judge of how much they've changed or not changed. But I think it's important that when we look at our colleagues, those men and women who, who've served us at home and abroad, that we just take a step back and we thank them. We thank them for, for their service, for, for dedicating, in some cases, 20, 20 plus years to serving our nation in, in the armed forces. President Reagan eloquently stated, we remember those who were called upon to give all a person can give. And remember those who were prepared to make that sacrifice if it were demanded of them in the line of duty, though it never was. Most of all, we remember the devotion and gallantry with which all of them ennobled their nation as they became champions of a noble cause. It is important that we remember. I think often in today's society and just the path, the very fast rush that we live in, we too often fail to remember. In, in the Old Testament, there's a story when the children of Israel have, have left Egypt and they're entering into the promised land and they're crossing the Jordan River into the land 
uh, that, that the Bible tells them that God had promised to them. That the, the, the tribe is, uh, that the 12 tribes are crossing the river. And Joshua commands men from each of the 12 tribes to go back into the Jordan and pick up stones. And he does that because he tells them he wants them to take those 12 stones to set up a memorial so that they in the future can remember what had occurred. I think that's a, that's a lesson from a Bible story that, that we need to heed. That, that we too need to take reminders and, and so that we can remember what men and women have done since even before the founding of our country, but certainly since the founding of our country. Because it's important to remember Winston Churchill observed, those who fail to learn from history are deemed to repeat it. And again, President Reagan, you probably can't tell that that's my favorite president. Um, but President Reagan reminded us, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We, didn't, we don't pass it on to, the children, to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for and handed on to them to do the same. So I think it's, an, it's appropriate that we remember and that today we just take a step back from our busy, busy schedules and re, we remember and honor that those men and women uh, who served our country, who sacrificed selflessly uh, and, and, and did so with, with, with service. It's my privilege today to get to introduce two of our own. And in the words of Ronald Reagan, two champions of a noble cause who honorably served our nation, who both of these men exemplified the very best in character and service. And I'm sure as they shared us, something that was formed, at least in part, during their military service. Our first speaker this, this afternoon is someone who I'm sure is familiar to all of you, Gene McCleskey, our chief of the Crime Victim Services Division. Gene appropriately served as a Marine, retiring a few years ago as a Lieutenant Colonel. Gene had a very distinguished career as a Marine officer, including service in Africa, where he was a part of the Marine Security Guards who provided protection to U.S. mission personnel at our embassies and consulates. After that service, Gene finished his service in the Marine Corps serving at U.S. Central Command in Tampa, Florida, where again he had a very important job where he was involved in operations overseeing the Middle East, including Iraq, during the time of, a, of, of the conflict there. After retiring from the Marine Corps, uh, Gene came to work here at OAG just a few years ago, back in, 19, in July 1999. And since that time, he has risen to be our, our chief of our uh, Crime Victim Service Division and does an outstanding John, job. Let me, let's all welcome Lieutenant Colonel, retired Gene McCleskey. Uh, good afternoon. I'm probably not as polished a speaker as Mr. Uh, Mathieu, but I do appreciate him using uh, President Reagan in some of his quotes because I'm going to also quote President Reagan here uh, towards the end of my uh, chat. Uh, as I go through my chat this afternoon, I have a theme, and I've used this theme uh, for quite a number of years in the victim services field about people who make a difference. And I'd like you to listen to some of the people that I think make a difference, both as veterans and uh, as employees of the Attorney General's office. Certainly, Americans uh, love our veterans, uh, especially at gatherings like this or on Memorial Day. I think it's important to remember that veterans and law enforcement are working for us and to protect us 365 days a year as we sleep at night all the time. It's, it's not a nine to five job by any stretch. The heroism that has been demonstrated time and time again by veterans from the American Revolution to the current global war on terrorism is sometimes unnoticed by those who enjoy that security and the difference that veterans and law enforcement make for us. For many of us veterans, our nation was important enough to endure long separations from our families, sometimes miss, miss the birth of our children, miss Christmas, miss birthdays. Sometimes we suffered uncomfortable and dangerous conditions. 
Veterans gave up something that is the most key to any of us that we can never get back, time. Once you, you've spent that time away from your family, you're just simply not gonna get it back. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the sacrifice that military families make. Uh, for those of you who have been blessed enough to, you know, to know my wife, she is the reason my children are the success they are today. It has little to nothing to do with me. Uh, my wife has had to endure career interruptions, just as other spouses have had. Many, many, many moves, changes of address, a disproportionate share of the parental responsibilities of raising children. My children had to deal with multiple changes in schools. For example, my daughter went to four high schools, uh, and one of which was the International School of uh, Kenya in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, my family also had to deal with where was dad? When's he coming home? What's he doing? It, it's very unknown to families communications and things like that with your family while you're gone. I also remember veterans when I was growing up out in Midland, out in West Texas, and I remember going with my father uh, to the VFW. My father was a, a World War II veteran, and sitting with the veterans and just listening to them. Sometimes they would talk, most of the time they would just sit. And I had a hard time understanding. Uh, these were older men. Uh, at that time, the military, uh, ex-military was primarily all men. Uh, they had gray hair, or like I do, receding hair. Uh, but they had this look in their eyes that was hard for me to understand. They were always looking at us children like they were seeing something that wasn't there. Now that I'm a, a veteran, I think I understand what they were seeing, and I think I understand what, what was there. Nothing we can talk about and nothing you can see on TV or in the movies can prepare you for the reality of war and combat. It doesn't last 30 minutes or two hours and then the show is over and everybody comes back to their families. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, combat is physically exhausting. It's terrifying. It places human beings in situations that they are not intellectually, emotionally, or morally prepared for. And while on the battlefield, you can certainly have courage, the, the mental courage to get through that. And it's something our law enforcement people also go through, to, to the courage to get through that and come back and do it again and again and again. Uh, the veterans we're talking about today came from all walks of life, all ethnicities, all, all racial, male, female. They shared fundamental qualities, though. They possessed a courage, a pride. They possessed a determination that they wanted to make a difference. They wanted to make a difference for their country. They wanted to make a difference for the world. They all saw qualities in themselves that made them want to serve a higher calling, something different. Many people didn't ask to leave their homes to go to a battlefield. In fact, many veterans never even get to a battlefield. It's kind of like practicing for a football game and the game never goes, but you have to be ready to play all the time. That's the nature of serving in the military or working in law enforcement. Candidly, you don't want to get in the game, but if you get in the game, you have to win. There's, there's no, no second place in what we do. As Jeff said, November 10th is also the 242nd birthday of the Marine Corps. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that the Corps was founded on November the 10th, 1775. It was established by the Second Continental Congress. And for the Marines here, they've heard this story, but I want to make sure everybody knows the Marine Corps was the service that the recruiting was done in a bar. And if you didn't know that, the first Marine two battalions were raised by recruiting in Tun Tavern in a bar in Boston. It's also appropriate that November the 10th is also my wife's birthday. And we've been married for 40 years. It was not a requirement for marriage that she have the same birthday as the Marine Corps. It just worked out that way, but I've never had to be faced with the, oh my gosh, I forgot my wife's birthday. Um, for the Marines here, we're part of something bigger. Whether we fought in Vietnam, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, or in the streets of Iraq or Afghanistan here in the recent battles, we're all different. For the rest of our lives, when everybody thinks of us, 
they'll think of, hey, there's Gene. He's a Marine. Hey, there's Mike. He's a Marine. We're associated closely like that. If you've ever been to our nation's capital and seen the iconic Marines Memorial, of the, the large statue of the Marines raising the flag over Mount Suribachi on Iwo Jima. There's an inscription on the side of that statue. Uncommon valor was a common virtue. The inscription doesn't say, this is easy, anybody can do it. Uncommon valor is a common virtue. We're Marines for life. We're never ex-Marines, we're never retired Marines, we're Marines. And we have to build and maintain that legacy and we have to continue to make a difference even though we're not on active duty. You know, a lot of the work we do here in the Office of the Attorney General, whether it's trying to find or assist the custodial parent and child support, consumer is trying to help a, an upset consumer, or the division I'm lucky enough to work in Crime Victim Services where we're trying to help a victim, we're all trying to make a difference in someone's life. And, and certainly, we publish a lot of data as an agency. We publish annual reports. We testify before the legislature. We talk about our legislative appropriations requests. But really, all the employees in the Attorney General's office are trying to do every day is make a difference for someone. Uh, I'd like to finish with a quote that I promised from President Reagan. And this was made in 1985, uh, especially appropriate for the Marines. President Reagan said some, some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference. The Marines don't have that problem. Happy Veterans Day, happy birthday Marines, Semper Fidelis. Th 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 thank you, Gene. Appreciate that. And especially the quotes from Reagan. Jim? Yeah, pressures. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, our second speaker uh, this afternoon is, is Jim Davis, our Deputy Attorney General for Civil Litigation. Uh, have you all seen the picture of Jim? <laughs> Make sure you get to see that one. Um, yours looks great, Jane. <laughs> Jim. Uh, following graduation from Austin High, uh, Jim enlisted in the U.S. Navy, uh, serving as an intelligence officer, or as a petty officer, eventually reaching the rank of petty officer second class. So we had the officer go first, and then now we're going to have the, the, the enlisted Navy person. Uh, Jim, as many of you probably know, Jim had a distinguished career as a litigator in private practice here in Austin and now oversees our entire civil litigation. Uh, one of the finest lawyers that I've had the opportunity to work with uh, and I look forward to Jim, you coming to share with us. Jim Davis. I think Jeff was uncomfortable to mention that I started off as a seaman recruit and then a seaman apprentice and a seaman. There's some things that just are a little off color for this kind of presentation. But I am enlisted, and that's what we are. And you join the Navy, you're going to be a certain kind of person, and that's, that's through the rest of your life. It is a real privilege to be here among this crowd, a, a large crowd, all of you public servants, all of you who are committed to helping out Texans every day. And we're here to celebrate those among us who have also served here in the agency, but served in the armed forces across their different times of their life. Have you walked around? Have you seen the photographs? It's interesting to see them. You don't need to look at mine over here, it's fine. Um, I know I have aged in 30 years. I know no one else here has aged, I get that. I wanna see Mr. Matier's photograph when he was 18 years old, how about that, anybody? What you can tell though when you look around is you can see that every veteran has a story, something about their background or their time in service, and I would encourage all of you this week or next week to stop and ask them about that story, hear what they have to say about it, and thank them individually. But we're here today to thank them collectively, and it's a good thing. So my story goes back 30 years when I was in Austin High and on no particular path for success. And I saw the commercial that changed the path of my life that I bet some of you know the tagline, 
Navy is not just a job, it's an adventure. adventure. So I signed up. So fast forward a few months and now I'm in the barracks. And there are 40 bunk beds, 80 bald-headed young men, different accents, different backgrounds, different religions, but somehow equally low in the eyes of our company commander. That would be a drill instructor in other branches. My company commander was an irritable man named Petty Officer Dick. Exactly. Exactly. A little bit of tone when you said his name, it was going to be a bad day for everybody. We learned a lot though in the Navy. We learned the Navy way, the traditions, how to pack a sea bag, how to keep your gig line straight. Anybody? Gig line? How to clean the head. But we also learned, most importantly, the Navy's core values. It's honor, courage, and commitment. Those principles are the string that run through every veteran. Those principles are what define the character of being in the armed services. And it's those reasons that we thank our veterans for their time. So what we learned in boot camp is that honor is to be mindful of the privilege of serving your fellow Americans and to always abide by an uncompromising code of integrity. Courage is the moral and mental strength to do what is right with commitment and resolution in the face of adversity or temptation. And commitment is the duty to join together as a team to improve the quality of your work, the quality of your people, and the quality of yourselves with relentless determination and seeking excellence. We celebrate our veterans because they personify honor, courage, and commitment. We have people here from all branches, many of whom during their time had incredible acts of bravery and heroism during times of war. And those are special veterans to honor. We have many, many more. As you look through the photographs, look at the titles, look what they did. Quietly did the thousands of things necessary to prepare for war. And as George Washington, my president I will cite, said, Preparation for war is the best way to preserve the peace. All those men and women sacrificed time and time and time for our purposes, for ourselves, for our country to be ready and safe. And they rightly deserve to be thanked. But I'm here to tell you something different. Thanking our veterans is not enough. We need to honor our veterans differently. We thank them, we want to hear their stories, but the truth is no veteran put on the uniform to be thanked. They put it on to preserve what is good about our country. They put it on to protect the American way of life that we oftentimes take for granted. They put it on so they can honor what we know about the Constitution, the effort to secure the blessings of liberty. And so this group, all of us, we owe it to them to ensure that we don't endanger, we don't sacrifice, we don't eschew the blessings of liberty that they have sacrificed to secure. And so, I'm going to charge you to do more than thank your veterans. I'm going to charge you instead to incorporate their principles into your own lives. Everyone in this room is a public servant. We all decided to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We all have the obligation to protect and promote what it means to be government, and what it means to be Texans. And we can all fulfill that mission better if we incorporate honor, courage, and commitment. So I ask you, act with honor. Be mindful of the privilege each of you have to represent the state of Texas and always abide by an uncompromising code of integrity. Have courage. Have the moral and mental strength to do what is right and just with commitment and resolution. And have commitment where you join together as a team to improve the quality of your work, 
and your people and yourselves with a relentless dedication to excellence. If you do that, you will do more than thank your veterans. If you do that, you will truly honor them. The veterans in the room, where are you? Raise your hands, step forward a little bit. These are your people. So we are all here today to thank you all. Thank you for your dedication to the country and to the state of Texas. We are grateful for your sacrifices that you gave us to protect our families, to preserve the peace, and to defend the nation in times of war. And mostly we thank you for being examples to us of honor and courage and commitment. May God bless you all. President Kennedy, yes, I can quote someone other than, 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 than President Reagan, said as we express our gratitude, we, we must never forget that the, the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. And I think, Jim, you gave us a, a great charge and, 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 and a great um, standard to, 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 to live by as we serve. Again, I want to thank everyone for, for one, coming today. Certainly want to thank the men and women in our agency who, who have served. We have a few special guests. Obviously, we've got this great uh, honor guard, uh, folks from the Joint Branch Honor Guard from Camp Mabry. And they include Staff Sergeant Jordan Jackson from the Air Division, Corporal Pauline Deal from the Army Division, Sergeant First Class Tomat, I knew I was going to, Grace, I tried, Tom, Tomaneri Kashimura from the Army Division, Sergeant Richard, Richard Boyer from the Army Division, and Sergeant Major Dwayne Naman from the Army Division. Please join me in thanking them for spending some time with us this afternoon. I'd also, if she's back there around the corner, uh, I'd like to thank Madison McWilliams. Is Madison still back there? Wave Madison. I'd like to thank Madison, who so beautifully performed her national anthem. I'd like to thank also Sherry Brumlett, uh, who helped us obtain, as you'll see back in this corner, a, some beautiful decorated chocolate chip cookies. Um, what are they called? Chocolate chip cookie pie or whatever from, from the Great American Cookie Company. So thank you, Sherry, for that. Finally, uh, last but not least, uh, and I, I, I'm sure everybody else did stand at attention when our chief petty officer uh, instructed us to do so. She hates this, so that's why I'm doing it. Because she specifically said, please don't recognize me, which is like, that's an invitation. Um, but I would. Uh, Grace Moody um, does a beyond excellent job. Whatever's beyond excellent is what Grace Moody does as our Veterans Affairs Liaison. The fact that we have 295 veterans employed uh, and that we've increased and continue to, to increase in, in obtaining veterans to work at the agency is due to a large part, if not exclusively, the efforts. I know no one here who exceeds her in the passion for her job. I know no one here who exceeds her in her passion for caring for her fellow veterans. Please join me in, in thanking Grace Moody. Grace, Missy's not here today, but you might take that and give it to her when you ask for a pay raise. <laughs> so again, th thank you all. I hope we can c do spend some time um, to live out, find a veteran, give them a hug. Uh, um, 
or you know, just hug anybody, I guess, if, if you'd like to, appropriately, of course, uh, and have a cookie, and let's spend some time visiting with each other. God bless you all.